Hey guys, The Rick here, bringing you another video. It's one on one time, and today we have a very special guest. Now, he is one of the best that the fish tank community here on YouTube has to offer. He is none other than Mr. Honey to you. Awesome having you here on the show. Hey, where you at, Rick? Thanks for having me, man. Well, I just want to say, first off, big fan of your channel, man. Really love the one on one with The Rick. A great series, great videos. The one on one series with The Rick. Uh, Shows the other side of the hobby, so I really like it, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Thanks for having me. Now I ask everyone this question: So, how long have you been in the hobby, and what do you love most about it? Well, I've only been in the hobby a relatively short time, and I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but it all started back in about the year 2000. I had a 30-gallon tank with an Oscar and a Honduran Red Point. I had no idea what I was doing. I had it for about a year. And I sold it to a friend of mine, and didn't touch the hobby again until about the year 2005. Um, bought a 90 gallon tank, but never set it up. We're going to do salt water. And then Hurricane Katrina hit and changed everything. Uh, it was crazy around here for a long time. The tank sat in the house, made its way to the garage, made its way to the backyard for about, I don't know, three, four years maybe. And then I came home from work one day and the family was setting up the tank. They were with fish and I got involved to help them out. And the hobby kind of took hold of me, and that was in 2011. So all total, I've only been in the hobby about four, right over four years. But I've learned a lot in a short amount of time. What I like most about the hobby is it's therapy for me. It, it is a stress reliever. It, it's an anxiety reducer. It takes my mind away from work, um, bills, or whatever the case may be. And uh, yeah, it's really just it's just relaxing to. Uh, to keep fish and plants. You are known for your African cichlids. What attracted you to them? Now, what attracted me to the African cichlids? Well, you know, as I told you before, I was a clueless fish keeper. Didn't even realize they had other places besides PetSmart and Petco that you could get fish. And uh, when we set this up, we went back to the Oscar and the Red Point. And I still have the Red Point to this day, but um, wasn't happy with with the setup of the tank and I started checking YouTube and seeing some other fish out there and man there's a whole nother world of where to get fish besides PetSmart and Petco. So I uh, did some research, found some LFS around here, walked in one that specializes in freshwater. They had an African cichlid show tank. The colors, the vibrance, the activity of that tank, man I was completely hooked and I haven't looked back since. That was it. That was it for me. Just a just the activity, the number of fish in the tank with the colors. Yeah, that, that's what really, really drew me in. What are some tips you would give guys who want to get into African cichlids? The biggest tip I can give anybody wanting to become an African cichlid keeper is do your research. Don't do like I did. Don't jump into this feet first and have no clue what you're getting into. Because uh, that aggression will drive you crazy. I, I eventually went back to, when I first started, I went back to the hospital red point but it just didn't do it for me anymore, so I had to go back to the Africans. And you've seen it on YouTube. There's a couple of us out there that went from the South and Central American cichlids to Africans and couldn't handle the aggression, and that's okay, it's, it's understandable. And they went back to the South and Central American cichlids. So do your research and, and learn how to control the aggression through the experiences of other people. Can you please explain the Mr. Honey to You method of introducing fish? Well, it all started as a timeout container to remove the bully. You know, you put a bully in there, it gives the other fish time to heal up and find a hiding spot. And then uh, you release them back into the, the general population. But, you know, when you want to add fish to these, to these established aquariums, African cichlids, it's recommended to add three to five fish at a time. It limits the aggression. The problem is, you don't always have the availability of fish you want to add to your tank. So you can't always find three to five fish you want to buy at $35, $45, $50 a pop and put them in your tank. So I took that critic age and just thinking that, you know, these fish all have their own territory. So you put him in a critic age, feed him while he's in there and monitor him, but you put him in one location. When those fish that like that area stop trying to attack him through the cage, you move him to another location. Same thing, when they stop attacking him, you move him to another location, another location. Within a week's time, I had him throughout the whole entire tank. I released him. Fine, he fit right in. It's like they became used to him. Uh, I've done this several times. I have not had it not work for me, not yet, not one time. So I don't remember who coined the phrase Mr. Honey Method, but uh, 
it seems to work and it worked for me and I just want to share it with you guys so that's why I made a video of it. Now what is more frustrating, working on a planet tank or dealing with the aggression of African siblings? Well you know as relaxing as this hobby is, yes it can be frustrating. Um, plants, you know you start off with the easy, easy grow plants, everything's fine and when you see a plant on YouTube, man I really want that plant. But that plant requires a different, different uh, softer water or hard water or brighter light or you know, it's, you know pressurized CO2, a different substrate, so you start fooling with these different things and it's very frustrating when you can't get a plant to grow the way you want it to grow. It can be very frustrating. But you can control eventually what makes that, that plant grow or not grow. Whereas over here, you can't control personalities, I'll say. The aggression is one thing. You overstock the tank, it limits the aggression. But my front toes in here, to this day, I cannot add a blue, front, a blue dolphin, a star sapphire, or a deep water hat. He had a bad experience with a blue dolphin, and to this day, anything that resembles a blue dolphin, he'll just flat out kill. As soon as I put it in a tank, within two or three days, he's going to kill him. Um, I had an insignia in here, he got big. He didn't fool, fool with anybody. A Renfid bully eye decided to pick on him one day, and then Cygnus just let him have it. So, you can't control that, and that is very frustrating that you cannot have all these different type of fish you like in the same tank. Uh, I love the blue dolphins. I would love to have a, another blue dolphin, but until I get a bigger tank and try it again, it's just not going to happen. So I would say the aggression is uh, more frustrating than, than having a plant die on you. I want to know, how many tanks are you currently running? I am currently running three tanks. I was up to seven, now I'm down to three. I have a 10 gallon, used to be shrimp tank, now it's a beta tank. Um, my youngest wanted to get into the hobby, so I sent him over to a 10 gallon. He's got two glow light tetras. Don't hate him, don't hate him. He's just starting into the hobby, you know, when you go to these stores and you see these big setups, it attracts the kids' attention. And, well, we're, just, we're starting from there. Uh, I have the 36 gallon bow front, high tech planet tank, and I have the 9 gallon African sickle tank. And of all the three, this is my favorite. This one will be here when the other ones come and go. I still like a planet tank, no doubt, but worst case scenario, I'm keeping my African Sipper tank. Now my family is not supportive of my hobby at all. So I want to know, is your family supportive of yours? Is the family supportive? Yeah, you know what, for the most part they are. Uh, you, guys, you guys know as well as I do, this can be a very addicting hobby. You can become obsessed with it, you know, you're dreaming about fish, you're waking up Figuring out what you're going to do with your tanks today. You're looking at the next store you're going to stop and what you're going to get next, you know. So it can become eh, problematic at times, but for the most part, yeah, they're supportive. They understand what it means to me and uh, the, the enjoyment I get from it. Now my last question is, is there any new projects, plans, or series come to your channel in the future? Let's see, anything new. Yeah, I have a few DIY projects that I'm working on and I'll be sharing it with, with you guys real soon. Um, I'm going to have a couple of product reviews. I'm definitely going to be doing a few more plant rescapes and showing some different aspects of plants. Some of the easy grow plants compared to some of the more high tech plants. And I'm, I'm also going to be doing a, uh, a series that I did when I first started my channel. Kind of got away from it and I'll be starting it back up again. Talking about some tips, some of the different tricks of the trades that you really don't hear too much about. So look forward to those. I'm also open to suggestions, so any ideas, just throw them my way. Now, big shout out to Mr. Honey to you for taking the time to do this video with me. Hey, look, thanks, Rick. I really appreciate it, man. Glad to be a part of it. Said before, I'm a big fan of your channel. Love your videos, man. Really love the one-on-one -on -one with the Rick, and just really glad to be a part of it, man. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, guys, this has been another one-on-one -on -one with the Rick. If you have a suggestion for another one-on-one, -on -one, please leave it down below. And as always, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.